Hey everybody, how you doing? You got Eric Worrell here with RentPrep.com and my co-host of Ask a Property Manager, Andrew Schultz. How you doing, Andrew? Good. How are you this morning? I'm doing pretty good. We got good. Uh, episode 36 here, and we're gonna. You want to just get right into it, or what do you want to do? Uh, it's up to you. You're the you're the guy who runs the show. I just sit here and answer questions from my car. I'm like a really not cool Wizard of Oz, you know. I'm just <laughs> Pulling digital lovers on these shows right now, so right, yeah. But uh, yeah, why don't we uh, jump into it and uh, see what sure. we got here today? So right. Andrew has picked three questions for us to discuss from the Rent Prep for Landlords Facebook group, and the first one comes from Rick. He asks, uh, he has a rental company that just contacted me about the people I just gave uh, vacate papers to. Do I tell them the crap they put me through, or just say they are great so I can get rid of them? So basically, somebody's calling, doing a verification call. Do a a landlord verification. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we've, I've seen this question a few times in the group where people are like, how do you handle this? I mean, they weren't a great tenant, but I don't want to get you know, in trouble for saying something I should have. And plus, right. I just want to get rid of them. So like, how do you handle these situations? Sure. Well, step one is going to be make sure that the party who's calling is actually authorized to ask for that information. So make sure you get a release that's signed by the tenant um authorizing that person to call you and ask those questions generally speaking you can verify the tenant's signature against maybe an old lease or your rental application or something to make sure the person who supposedly signed it did actually sign it Um, i would definitely double check that to make sure that your signatures match Uh, and then make sure that in the release that it specifically states that they can contact previous landlords and ask questions because a lot of times they won't they won't include landlords. They might include employers or the ability to pull a credit check, but they may not say, and the ability to contact previous landlords. So make sure that you're okay to give out that information, step one, before you give any information out. Um, step two, and actually it's worth pointing out, because I use the rent prep application, a mm-hmm. slightly modified version of it. The rent prep application specifically asks um, for release from for credit and background check, for employment, for landlord. I think it even mentions like banks and stuff. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. Yeah, it's a good so. application. If you guys aren't using that, you probably should be. Um, you can pull that up off the Rent Prep for Landlords Facebook group, as a matter yeah. of fact, because I gave somebody a reference to that this morning when I was on there. Um, as far as what information to release... I will release the lease dates. I will release the rent amount. I will release whether or not rent was paid on time. Mm -hmm. um, And I will release whether or not we would rent to them again. Most landlords are going to be able to read between the lines if you say that you wouldn't rent to them again, or you say that their rent was $7.75 a month and they paid late five months out of 12 months in the lease term. Most landlords are going to be able to read between the lines at that point. So you don't have to get into the the real nitty gritty of what these tenants did and any damages they caused and whatever. Um, And if it's a good tenant, they'll be able to determine that based on your answer to, would you rent to them again? If the answer is yes, then obviously if one landlord's willing to rent to them, that's probably a pretty good indicator that somebody else will. Yep. Don't lie. Um, We get a lot of landlords that either try to pass off a reference on a bad tenant saying, Oh yeah, they were wonderful or something like that. Don't lie. Um, And the reason I say that is there's a lot of trust in our industry, um, especially when you're talking landlord to landlord about a prospective tenant or something like that. All you're doing is setting another landlord up for failure. And the next time that that tenant screws that landlord over and they get the phone call for the landlord reference, they're going to lie. And it just continues to perpetuate the cycle. Be truthful, but don't overexpose yourself. You don't have to get into the nitty gritty about what damages were done and, and, you know, how they had cats that peed on your carpet and, you know, they left cigarette burns in your countertops and this and that and the other thing. Well, you don't have to get into all the nitty gritty. Just, you know, be honest. Say, yeah, the rent was on time. No, it wasn't on time. Would you rent to them again? Yes or no. Most landlords can read between the lines. If you say, um, I'm not willing to rent to that person again, then they're probably not going to take that chance. Yeah. And I mean, most of the things that you're providing, uh, those are all like factual items. So it's like, exactly. what was the rent paid on time? What was the rent amount? What were the lease mm-hmm. start and end dates? The only thing that's really an opinion is if you'd rent to them again. So it's It like, really takes the uh, the emotion out of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So 
Yeah, I think those are uh, pretty good uh, standard questions to answer. You're going to help somebody out, but you're not going to expose yourself to maybe giving away too much and then getting, you know, in some sort of issue with somebody. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It, you know, if it's an issue where you're trying to get rid of this person, yeah, just stick with what Andrew just said. I think that's fine. I mean, yeah, granted, you might have like a little bit extra time with them because that fell through for them and they're looking for housing. But if you're right. vacating and, you know, evicting them anyways, that's not really going to play into timelines probably anyways, you know. Well, and you know, I found that, um, I don't know if this is just a Buffalo market thing or if this is a nationwide thing. I would say we probably only get landlord reference requests one out of every 10 tenants that moves, Mm -hmm. which tells me that either landlords are not really screening their applicants the way they need to be screened or tenants are providing fake contact information because they know we're not going to give them a stellar reference or something along those lines. It's, it's very seldom that we actually get a landlord reference request into our office. Um, so, you know, if you get those requests, do as much as you can to honor them, I would say. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's one of those things. I, we've asked other property managers that same question because I know you've said that. Um, Kim Hampton, who we've had on before from Orlando, uh, they've got about 1,000 units, and they said they can – I don't even think it was one out of 10. Um, just a yeah, lot of landlords. it may not be one out of 10, to be honest with you. A lot of landlords don't make those verification calls because it's kind of uncomfortable. It's an extra step. Um, I mean, we do make those calls with our platinum package at rent prep for uh, people. Uh, mm-hmm. so, and we make, I mean, I did the math on it. We've made over 60,000 of those calls. <laughs> yeah. But we do get a lot of landlords and property managers are like, you're the first person who's ever called me asking about a previous tenant and I've got a hundred units, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think it's just the, it's the one that requires the kind of the most amount of effort and it's, it's uncomfortable because you're asking like a complete stranger about somebody or you're asking mm-hmm. a job an employer about, you know, their income and stuff like that, but you can get mm-hmm. a lot of details from those phone calls. So I'd say don't yeah. skip it. No, absolutely. For sure. It's, it's a hugely important step. Bigly important. Bigly <laughs> <laughs> all right moving right along <laughs> uh covering us up on the screen here with this one this is a longer one uh this came from margaret she said uh how in the world do i tell someone that i am not a charity organization my rule for considering a tenant is the income must be at least two times the rent amount which is pretty low that's low <laughs> yeah three three x is probably standard you know I, I would say two and a half to three x depending on if there's like utilities and stuff included yeah and then uh, someone was desperately trying to view one of my two bedroom rentals where the rent is six fifty, and she told me that only her spouse works and the family income right now is eleven hundred dollars. After paying rent mm-hmm. utilities, they will have very little money left for surviving until the next paycheck. I'd love to help, but I have to keep the sentiments and the business in separate drawers of my desk. What is a good way to tell people that you can't afford to rent to them after fifteen years of landlording? I still have problems. <sighs> okay. So, I mean, really, if we're boiling it down, it's like, what's the, what's a kind way to let somebody know they don't meet your criteria? Well, okay. It starts at the beginning. It starts with your apartment ad. Uh, Make sure you put your selection criteria right in the apartment ad. Make it crystal clear. This is what our selection criteria is. You need to have a net income of, and I don't use three times the rent anymore. I put the actual amount in. You need to have an after-tax income. After tax, not net, because some people don't know the difference. Sure. After tax income of whatever amount per month. Um, You need to have a credit score of X. You need to have a clean criminal background. You need to have whatever your criteria are. We've discussed criteria about a million times. Mm. When you do your pre-screening, ask them again, what is your monthly income? If they tell you that their monthly income is less than the uh, requirement, it's very straightforward. Just tell them, unfortunately, you don't meet the income requirement for this apartment. We would not be able to offer the apartment to you. And unfortunately, there's, there's no reason to show the apartment at that point. Yep. End the call. Move on with life. Um, put it on your rental application. So we have a page three to our rental application, which is essentially information about our company, why you should consider renting from Realty Edge as opposed to maybe a... Uh, another landlord, um, you know, our 24-hour on-call maintenance services and this and that and the other thing. And it also includes a section on this is our rental criteria. So, again, the third time now they're seeing this rental criteria. Um, and then it also, at the very bottom, has a checklist of everything they need to hand us when they turn in their application so that they know that they're giving us all the information. So that's three times that they're seeing that criteria before you even screen their application. Yeah. 
at that point, if they get through the, and they're in the application process, you've accepted their application, you screen it and you realize they don't have enough income, it's a very simple denial letter. Um, you can use the adverse action letter for it, even if you're not pulling the credit and background. Credit background is the last thing that we look at. Um, we do our, our income verifications and everything else first. Credit's the last thing we do because that's really the only thing that we're out of pocket on. Um, so if you get to the point, income is the first thing that we look at. So if you run their income and their income's insufficient, just send the adverse action letter and move on. Um, you know, it's, it's impossible to screen every, pe every tenant out that doesn't qualify for the uh, app harbor. It's impossible. You're going to get some that sneak through all the way to the application stage. That's where you'll catch them because that's where rubber meets the road. That's where the tenant actually has to prove what their income is. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a very thorough answer. And uh, yeah, again, if you get that process down, then it's just, you're not, I, if you have a process and a system that you've taken time to write out, whether it's, you know, uh, Google Docs or whatever, then it's just, you stick to that. And that's kind of your barometer of how you handle the situation rather than just feeling this weird emotional, you know, tug and pull between somebody who can't afford to live in your rental. And then, right. you know, this is our system, our criteria, sorry. Uh, exactly. You don't yeah. have to be mean and about it's, it. It's but... actually a really great idea to have written criteria. Even if you only have one or two units, you should still have that established written criteria that you screen against uh, because it helps you, it can help you in the event of a fair housing claim. Well, they discriminated against me because of whatever. No, we didn't discriminate against you. You didn't meet our, our, our criteria because your income was insufficient, your credit was in the tank, and um, you know, you had no job or something like that. So having that set criteria and following it every time just helps to make you a better landlord and helps to protect you from liabilities. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's move to our third and final question here. Uh, this one comes from uh, Timon and this person asks, uh, landlords, do you purchase extended warranty for the new appliances for your rental or home warranty for everything? No. <laughs> no, I think home warranty companies are a scam, to be honest with you. Um, we've had a couple of our clients that have insisted on home warranties when they first started out doing uh, investment property. Uh -huh. They've all dropped them. Okay. They've all dropped their warranty companies. And the reason for that is um, the warranty companies are not quick to get things scheduled. For instance, we had uh, the house, house had a home warranty and <clears throat> the refrigerator was not working, was not cooling at all. And they were not able to get a technician out for a full week. Like, they just couldn't get somebody out there before a full week. I think I've I ended up calling people. my appliance guy. Yeah, yeah I ended up calling my appliance guy and what, he went out. And it's just, they're not worth it. The home warranty companies, it, I've never seen a home warranty company worth their weight in salt. I've also never seen a home warranty company that can act faster than what we can act by calling someone that we either have an existing relationship or even opening the yellow pages. If you're a newer landlord or only have a few units, open up the yellow pages and find somebody that's, or ask on Facebook. There's a lot of people on Facebook who can give you recommendations for quality contractors, things like that. Yep. Home warranty company is just not the way to go. Um, as far as appliance warranties, I think they usually come with like a one year manufacturer's warranty. After that, just have it appear, uh, repaired by an appliance repair technician. You're still better off than spending the money on an extended warranty. Yeah. I kind of look at warranties like any kind of insurance that you can buy that's not mandatory. Uh, right. you know, they, they come up with that number because it's a profitable business, you know? So right. they're thinking on average, you know, this is how much we're going to have to pay out, but this is how much we're going to collect. So that means on average as an individual, you're just giving money for what you hope is peace of mind, but might be a pain later to collect on. Anyways. Right. So, yeah, exactly. I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Like, even if it's just like I, I buy a TV and they're at checkout, and they're like, "Do you want a three-year warranty on this?" I'm like, "No, I don't." Like, yeah, I'm, no, I'm gonna lose paperwork or something, and uh, <laughs> I'll forget that I have this, whatever the situation is. Right, exactly. Or you're gonna be yeah. a pain to get the repair done. So, no. right, or it'll happen. It'll happen. Like, the, it'll break on day, you know, year three plus one day. Yep. Um, and then you've spent that money on the warranty and got zero value out of it. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that concludes the uh, three questions for this week's episode of Ask a Property Manager. Uh, if you're uh, watching and you have questions, you can always join us in the uh, Rent Prep for Landlords Facebook group, which you can find by searching for Rent Prep for Landlords. Or if you're watching us on our Facebook page, there's a link in the uh, copy included with this video. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, Andrew uh, searches for questions every week and we answer them here. And 
yeah, we look forward to uh, answering your questions and you can always connect with us inside of the Facebook group as well. Absolutely. All right, Andrew, uh, have a good rest of your week and I will uh, talk to you soon. You as well. Have a good